my. I have been fighting this flipped over Jesus tree. I just something told me there was something in here. See a turned over tree. This is gonna be a prayers for the point moment. Man, does it look beautiful, large and in charge. Prayers for the point. She's still going. Oh yeah. How about that beauty boys? Oh my. Very thin, very well made. As far as type, I am not 100% sure. Looks like some beautiful Fort Payne. I'll have to look into that type. It's a rather large point for this spot. It's got some awesome flaking on it. It felt like it had some grinding. That could be crazy. Yeah, that base feels definitely ground. So is that little hafting area, but we'll do a little research into her. You wanna wash her up with me? Oh, let me get out of this Jesus tree. Ay, that felt good on the back. Heck yeah, man. Heck yeah. That's why we do it. I've been out so many times since my last video. Oh, get out of the way, baby, get out of the way. Come here, water. Ah. That is a beaut. Again, as far as type, not 100% sure. See, she's almost made on a flake. Well worked all the way around it, but definitely looking like a knife with that curve to it. Get some flaking to show, let's see. She got that old flaking or what on her. She's kind of got a little, little overshot looking flaking with some finer edge work to it. Draw that side one more time. Y'all tell me. That is a gorgeous, gorgeous piece. tiny little trigger bite on that tip flea bite thin to win it's a good it's a two and a half incher pushing three Just let her dry out a second because that material's coming to life what a beauty Boy, that is a sight for sore eyes. Been a long time. Penny's back, baby. See y'all. All right, here she be. We have what I believe is a Greenbrier Dalton. Now I've reached out to two highly, highly respected people in the community. One, I'll go ahead and drop your name, brother, points through 65 and two separately, a very, very wise man who's a very good family friend. His name is Rory McKee. He actually helped write several of the Overstreet books, especially the first one, probably second and third for sure. And he hosts a lot of the artifact shows. If you've ever been to any of them, most likely you've seen Roy from St. Joseph to Alabama to Texas to you name it, Roy gets around and he definitely hosts a lot of the shows. But again, both of them were asked individually and both of them said Greenbrier Dalton. And, you know, my eyes were, were relatively closed. You know, in the video, I had no idea what I found. I knew it was old. My uncle said Benton, and it just, to me, that does not look like a Benton. It kind of does at the base. If you ignore what are all the characteristics, sure, oh yeah, that might be a Benton. But once you see the, you know, the big fluting channel, the thinning strikes, the fine edge work all the way around the base, all the way around the piece, the grinding, I mean, extremely ground base, extremely ground hefting areas, this thing has all types of paleo characteristics about it, or trans paleo characteristics, which, you know, are transitional. It's got the big overshot flaking, you know, the diagonal parallel or transverse or whatever that might be called. And again, all that fine edge work. And there were serrations on this point. At one, you know, at one point in time, a lot of the serrations have been wore off. 
Oh, I mean, you can see it here. Not until I found this one and did a lot of research and talked to a lot of people that, you know, I greatly respected, I realized what this is. This is a Greenbrier Dalton blade as well and a just pristine example. I can't believe this guy lost it, but you can see a lot of the pine tree characteristics on it. It's got some of the Eden slash paleo characteristics as well. It's got a big old fluting strike on this side, thinning strike, big old thinning strike on this side. It comes way up the piece. You can't see it because that sticker's sitting right in the middle of it, but that big old fluting strike comes way up the piece as well. You see the footed, uh, footed side very heavily ground again. This is going to be a Greenbrier Dalton knife. And I believe some cultures actually made what was knives. This I, I, I had in a video, I said Beaver Lake or maybe Candy Creek. But um, yes, you know, you can see the curve, the obvious curves to these points are these, these uh, knives here. And these, were, these weren't just resharpened Greenbrier Daltons. These were made as and what is, I believe, to be a knife. These were made as a knife. Here you have these two right here found on the exact same site as where these are coming from. Exact same site. And these would be the projectile. This is a Greenbrier Dalton classic projectile form. It is flat in cross section, four way beveled. It is not, not left hand beveled at all. It's well balanced. That's meant to go inside something. And yes, um, not all cultures just literally, uh, you know, turned a point straight in from the point type into a blade. You know, Missouri, Missouri has a, a, a completely different style Dalton. So does Arkansas, so does Louisiana. When you get to Middle Tennessee, or East Tennessee, because they have what a lot of archaeologists say, the Candy Creek has been mislabeled for years, and that there are probably plenty of rednecks, which I would be one of them, the chief of them. <laughs> but either way, there are plenty of rednecks that probably have a cigar box full of Candy Creeks and label and think it to be a woodland point, and that could not be further from the truth. The Candy Creek would be the East Tennessee Dalton, and yes, there's tons of literature out there. Um, you know, if anybody's interested in it, reach out in a comment and I will uh, try to include a link maybe in the video or, you know, definitely comment back with the link. But again, these would be Greenbrier Dalton blades. This would be a first stage Greenbrier Dalton blade. In my opinion, it could just be a Greenbrier. I would say a lot of people called it a quad, but I would say that would be a Greenbrier Dalton blade. Just has probably more of a first stage and has not been curved and beveled yet. Um, but yes, um, just wanted to do a quick Rock Talk video for you. Again, I'd love to hear any of your opinions, thoughts, or, you know, anything on the subject. I appreciate everybody who, you know, reached out during my post, my teaser little post. <laughs> and I hope she was worth the wait because she is just gorgeous, guys gorgeous i've hunted this site for five years to find this I'm talking about persistence and patience and gosh this year i was like man i'm gonna ignore this site because mostly it puts out a lot of woodland late archaic and the occasional mid archaic pieces from big slews and evas and man am i glad i didn't ignore this site this year i was gonna probably put it on the back burner and focus on where some of my uh you know hardens lost lakes and, and some lermas and some other stuff are coming from which are very, very close in, in proximity to the, this site. But yes, um, and the only site yet to have put out anything for me this year, and I've been to all of them, is the one I was going to neglect. If that tells you anything, five years of hunting, don't give up on it. Or the modern boys play, the Pepe Slade boys. The Pepe Slade in the words of Josie Wales. But um, yes, I, I, I would believe that there are certain point types that made projectiles and knives to go with them. Now, some might just call this a Greenbrier. I wouldn't just call it a Greenbrier, nor this one. They have too much paleo characteristics. Same with this one. A lot of people call this a quad. And in all my reading, a lot of archeologists um, believe that the quad actually came from, not, not came from, but is a Greenbrier Dalton that just has not been resharpened. And yes, you could see, you know, I don't know, call me crazy, call me whatever. It could be dumb as hell, but, and, and, you know, another rock talk video in this year is going to put that to the test because I'm going to be on that Harden Lost Lake site and where I find the Hardens, I find the Lost Lake. So you have, and all the Hardens I find are extremely well balanced. I mean, extremely well balanced. These would be the projectile point. 
and that would be the blade. That is my assumption. And you know, you call me crazy, whatever. That's why I love history and I love science because it's literally just the educated guess, best guess wins. Now I know things have been found in context and like my brother said, until you find that sitting on a man's chest when you're digging a Lost Lake knife and his projectile point sitting next to him, you're never gonna know. And I would agree, but I think, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely an interesting conversation something really neat about you know i called that a beaver lake but I, that's definitely you can see the thinning strike it's got multiple thinning strikes from the base parallel sides footed side weak shallow notch which is the big id for these it's a weak side shallow notch and you know almost barely any shoulders and the the base is almost extremely distinct from the blade so you have the base and then you have the blade and it's separated by these these weak little shoulders these very weak little shoulders right here that is a very, very good, uh, you know, even on the uh, Hardaway and the uh, the Palmer, the San Patrice, um, you know, all these are variants in forms of the Dalton. You know, once you get out of Missouri again with the prototypical Meserve or, or I think it's Meserve is what it's called on the other side of the Mississippi or on the other side of, you know, the Western Tennessee finds Daltons too. And they're actually aged to be a little bit older, but I think Missouri's Daltons came from out West and our Daltons came from, you know, that, you know, from Missouri this way. But once they get far enough from what is their point of origin, something changes stylistically. Obviously, the makers, you know, change as well. But, you know, here we have classic, classic projectile points. This was found within 10 feet of that blade right here on that site five years ago, which I thought initially it was a Dalton Knuckles when I found it. You see, it's got the foot in the straight side. What other one has the foot in the straight side? You know, this guy right here. It's got the foot and then it's got a straight side like an Eden almost. It's just a used up, discarded at camp and it's even been burned in a fire. So, you know, that was definitely discarded at the camp. But wanted to give you what was my, my thoughts and assumptions and I'd love to hear your opinions. If anybody out there is finding Hardens and Lost Lakes together and very closely associated, I would love to know. Um, and as far as Greenbriars, you know, same thing. On this site, it's taken five years, and it'll take you years and years of hunting to, to kind of come to a conclusion. But, you know, gosh, like I said, history and archaeology, all it is is best guess. It's hypothesis and best guess wins. But very, uh, very cool part about this point. Um... You know, this looks like a gigantic flute coming from the base, but you can see here the thinning strikes. It's got multiple attempts down there at the bottom. One, two right there. And then, you know, fine edge work around it. But those are those are short little flakes. This was actually originated, which a lot of Cumberlands and a lot of those big fluted points, I bet this is how they did it. They literally set up that fluting channel. And then here's your small point on one of the, the thickest side of the base. So usually if you look at the base, the thicker side is the percussion bubble. And there is your small point right there. Very neat. And you can see it in the in the in in the uh, the lighting as far as the sheen on that flute fluting channel. If you trace it back, you can see the two independent ones right there on the right. But if you trace it back, it all traces back right to that corner. So again, um, this is an observation that not I make, but um, not that I didn't make that archaeologists made and all their study over the Candy Creek point. So if you wanna do a lot of really cool research, the Candy Creek's been mislabeled for years, in my opinion, and the Candy Creek is most certainly a variant of the Dalton or the East Tennessee Dalton. And that's kinda, of, you know, I was I was really leaning East Tennessee Dalton or Greenbrier Dalton. You know, I, 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 I uh, toyed around with Knuckles, I toyed around with Holland, but it most certainly fits the uh, Dalton complex of points and has all the trans, transitional paleo points or transitional paleo characteristics on this point and again if you've made it this far in the video thank you so much sorry i know long long-winded benny has a little difficulty putting all this into words but yes um again i'd be very very uh very happy to know what you think and thank you all again for whoever commented on the on the post last night Y'all take care and have a great weekend.